Hi everybody! Thank you for joining us for our sit and sip quarantine style. We are sitting and sipping his 1880 Grand Marnier favorite liqueur. Cheers to that. So let me start off with... Why are you so giggly? I don't know! I'm so excited! You're right. Partner. I'm so excited you're my favorite person in the world. You're my favorite person in the world. Okay, so okay, I'll stop being giggly. Okay, here we go. If you were not an actor, what would you be doing professionally? I don't know. Something hmm. That's a good question. It's a very good question. I don't know. Something something where I would be helping people. Maybe I would I would I, I have a heart for the homeless. And I, I, I would want to, you know, be a part of, you know, shifting the, the dynamic that we have as far as our relationship with the homeless, with, you know, making sure that there's some type of like reformation system for them. I'd like to be a part of something like that, you know, whether I'm doing this or not, I would love to, I'd love to help, you know, the world in some kind of way, particularly with those that not everybody sees, mm -hmm. you know? I love that. Yeah. Who is your favorite actor and why? Ah, uh, you have many. I have many. Yeah. I, in, um, I'm lately. I've been watching James Cagney, as you know. If you guys haven't seen um, The Public Enemy or White Heat or Love Me or Leave Me, I think those are my three like tops of James Cagney, and I just love him because, I mean, this is an actor who was acting in the you know in as early as like the '30s and the '40s and well beyond that but something about him just popped like it was like he was well beyond his time mm -hmm. you look at the format and you know so much of it is like black and white and you look you know it looks like the quality it doesn't seem as high and you know the high resolution forget forget about it it's not even on that on that level but this man is like all the high resolution you need when he comes out and, and comes alive it's just like wow i mean looking at him and his performance his performances that i've seen you know, really inspire me uh, as an actor, as a writer actor, mm -hmm. and I am a writer actor. For, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, mm -hmm. um, Sylvester Stallone, man, like yeah. he, he wrote his own ticket, and you know, and and refused to let anybody else play, you know, his signature part, which is Rocky. And and for me, it just really said something to watch an artist stand by not only his work but his value in the work that infused that work, mm -hmm. and didn't let anybody, you know, uh, push him out even if it meant losing the deal, losing the money, and actor, actor, you know, I love Denzel, that's my mm -hmm. guy. You know, he's he just, just a consummate actor and somebody that, you know, I've looked up to for a long time. You also love Sidney Poitier a lot. And Sidney Poitier! Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we just sat and watched a whole bunch of his movies, which mm -hmm. we love. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Okay, so what performance thus far has been your favorite? And mm -hmm. why, that you have, you have done? Uh, Who's been your favorite character to play thus far? We had this conversation, didn't we, just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. I um, I mean, up to date, I've enjoyed. I enjoyed playing, and nobody has. You guys haven't seen this yet. It's a character named William Boston in uh, a movie called The Twenty Fourth, a movie that I uh, co-wrote with uh, Kevin Wilmont. Uh, he was a co-writer of uh, Black Klansman, won an Oscar last year. Uh, it's two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep my times again. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I just I love that character. I think that you know, in particular. It was really great to, to, you know, it's a starring role in the movie and it was really great to have a journey from the beginning to end where I could, you know, track and, it, I mean, the dignity of this man, the um, watching the, the stakes, you know, rise as far as what, what he wanted to do coming down into, you know, um, Texas. It's, it, it's a movie that's based in Texas. When he came there, he wanted to add to, you know, the, the black uh, experience, thought he could bring, you know, the education that he had to be useful in his own way and to watch you know, his whole psychology and, and agenda, you know, basically break down in front of him. And <clears throat> all he has left are the people that are around him and they all have one agenda, respect and be treated as men, um, to be treated as men. And for me, I, I just felt like that was just so inspirational a part. And, you know, as far as, you know, the surges and the swell of the performance, I felt like that was my favorite. Mm -hmm. It was really good to like, you know, to, to build that thing, you know, mm -hmm. I've been on TV for so long and so often. Feels know, good to go from beginning, middle and end. You don't get to, to see arc. it. Exactly. Yeah. You don't get to see it in one sitting, you know, you have to wait the next week and you know what I mean? All the promotions and the hype and everything with the, with a film or with a play, you know, it just, 
you go on that ride and you don't get off until it's done. I love that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're in loungewear and you just look so pretty. Baby. See, we got ready in like different bathrooms. We did. And I'm I like, my blanket though. I'm sitting here listening to my Stevie Wonder, like getting ready, like, yeah, let me get ready for my wife. For our date. Come out here. And, and I'm in sweat. I'm like, no, you look great though. Oh, I, I just baby. feel like I want to do my best. And you like, look amazing. And you don't have to try though. And here I am, like, whatever. Oh. Whatever. So you didn't see I what, I, what I had to do to look. I love it. Like I just rolled oh, out of baby, bed. Oh baby, all you gotta do is wake up. <laughs> okay, here we go. From the moment you chose to become an actor until today, what is the greatest or most memorable lesson that you've learned during the journey? Of being an actor? I think the lesson of, I mean, it's twofold, I guess. It's, it's empathy, empathy for others and I don't want to say sympathy or empathy for myself, but like empathy for others and compassion. I guess the compassion for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I I beat myself down, you know, in my as you well know in my work. Like I just you know it's it, there's not a whole lot that's more important to me in the process than action and cut what happens in between and the preparation. <clears throat> the need, the desire to get it, you know what I mean? To be in that moment and there's, I think there's a little bit of a, a, a of, of an implication that, that that things have to be right in, in the process of it. Like I have to do it right. And what's the right way, who knows, versus, you know what I mean? Find, you know, being able to mind the land and find, you know, the character. You know, I have empathy for that person, but I've, I've always been really hard on myself to try and do the thing you know in a way that I thought I thought was right versus what you know what naturally came sometimes and I think that sometimes I got my own way earlier I got my own way mm. with that I could I could see that you know mm. especially looking back retrospect as a as a mug but um yeah like empathy for others and compassion for myself mm, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. why don't you have a social media forum mm. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm about to ask him this question <laughs> I want to tell the back you make me spit up on your head. <laughs> um, well, why no Twitter? Why no Instagram? It's just not for me. No? It's just not for me. Um, I tried it for a while. The only, I mean, I got on it. It wasn't for me before. And when I got on it, the, um, it was simply because I was told by a very wise man <laughs> that if you don't put your name up there, like your original name, then somebody's going to take it. And I'm like, oh, oh, no, I don't want that to happen. And this right. is before um, Empire. So, oh, Empire aired and, and, and became, you know, popular in its first season. I, I did that for that time and it just wasn't, it didn't speak to me in any way, to be honest with you. I found myself looking, you know, looking at it and like not really, I could express, you know, my myself the way that I wanted, which was cool, but I thought I was already doing that with my work. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a particularly private person and I don't need to go on and, and, and look and see i mean i'm not knocking it for you know a lot of people many people use it and you know especially people in our field and have a form and it's useful and you know for me i just you know i i feel blessed to preach through my work and i would rather use that time to write to you know to act to read to build on to onto me um and express myself in in a, in a different way that wasn't so hands-on i think you know the world could deal with a a little bit more mystery, you know, a little bit less access. What is, what is your greatest fear? I don't have fear. I don't have fears. I don't have fears. You don't have one great fear? I don't have fears. I think that I used to fear failure, you know, mm. but um, I just, my relationship with God, I, I, you know, I take it literally. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. Ooh. Second Timothy one verse seven. You smell the liquor. No. <laughs> no. 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 First of all, no. But we're no. talking about that. We listen. We no. Sitting. No. I was saying no. I was saying no. Sit and no sit for I was, <laughs> okay. Thank you for drinking. No. No. I was thinking. I went woo because I was thinking to myself that <laughs> my greatest fear is this is not a question for me, but you know. In the movie 2012, when you saw like the tsunami, the coming, yeah. yes, like that is like the worst thing that I think anyone could ever see in their life. I think that your heart can beat fast without you having a fear. 
I think that you can have anticipation without having fear. I people, mean, people say that nervousness and, and excitement are the same energy. It's just that excitement is is this flutter in your chest, but you're expecting a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And nervousness is the same flutter in your chest, but you're expecting a bad outcome, I potentially. That. I understand that, sweetheart. I think, um, it's an, I agree with that 100%, first of all. And secondly, I, I, I feel more like less, less of an energy and more of a binding. Mm. Like, you know, you're, if you're in fear, you're bound. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not just an energy, it's a psychology. And for me, um, I don't, I don't do, I don't do that. I don't do that because I know who I serve and who I am. Amen. Amen. That's a good one. One of your most embarrassing moments, go. Lord help. <laughs> I was singing. Tell me. I was singing. <laughs> do I know this story? You, I, I mean, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> go ahead, tell me. I, I told, I, I told it a couple times. If I didn't, my family did. I was, uh, I, I was a student at Andrew College in Cuthbert, Georgia, like mm -hmm. deep, 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 deep south, Cuthbert. you know, Georgia. Uh -huh. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm about it anyway. I'm <laughs> uh, there was a, a, a pageant that I was a part of with my sister Brandy. And a pageant? A pageant, yeah. They oh, like, a, like Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Andrew College. Pageant. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I was singing, and I was singing, uh, I was singing, um, what is it? I forget. Uh, knocks me off my feet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm doing that. <clears throat> but the problem is this, Grace. I'm singing the Donnell Jones version uh -huh. to the Stevie Wonder instrumentation. Oh, no. I made it clear. I'm like, listen, this is the one I want to do. There, there are two versions of this song that are popular. I want to do the Daniel Jones version. I don't mess with Stevie. Stevie's, you know, in the lane of his own. <laughs> he's in the lane of his own. I just want to, you know, I want to crew. I want to, I want to, I want to croon and cruise at the same time, right mm -hmm. here. But what you do? You slide and, and slip. I, yeah, well, I, I slid <laughs> to a couple bad notes. <laughs> Like. I'll do this because yeah. we're being honest. Mm -hmm. I can hit the note. Right. Y'all know I can hit the note. <laughs> but for whatever reason, uh -huh. for, whatever, for whatever reason, uh -huh. I was like, I don't want to boy you. <laughs> <laughs> like my family was there, my mom and my dad were in the back, like on their feet because it was going real good. And then all yeah. of a sudden, they were like, Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mama, show why you do that. Start, you know what I mean? Sitting down. My dad like looked like he growling and he like embarrassed. Probably. I came all the way here from Atlanta for this. <laughs> oh no! Oh Lord! That's terrible. And I bet you your family don't let you live that way. No, now. they talk about it all the time. I won't add it. I'm sweating. I'm embarrassed. Ooh, child, here we go. Um, yeah. If you could wake up tomorrow morning having gained one ability or a quality, what would it be and why? Ability, like what? Like anything? Anything. If you could wake up tomorrow and have one more... I can fly? Sure. I would fly. Really? I would fly. Some people Why? like want to read people's minds. I don't want to know what's in your mind. I just want to fly. Because I enjoy... <laughs> because I just... I like I like bird's eye view. I like alone time. I like to... You know what I mean? I'd like to feel what it's like to soar. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just me and, and God and the wind and, you know, the art below. Right. Just, you know what I mean? But I would want to fly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you also said before that if you could be an animal, you'd be an eagle. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to fly. Because the fly thing. And I like fish. That makes sense. <laughs> you were so <laughs> Okay. For what do you feel the most grateful in life? My relationship with God. I keep talking about it, but it's true. Um, it took a, a very... Um, rough experience to bring me into the realization that I wasn't here by myself and that there was purpose for me. When I got that, that relationship, I truly, I could truly understand on the journey, I'm still on it, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the idea of purpose tied into God's glory. What are you most proud of yourself in the last year? With yourself. What are you most proud of with for yourself? In the last oh, year. then I got a movie made. Then I got a movie made. I've been working on um, a film for um, a number of years, maybe two, two and a half years. The the twenty fourth is what it's called, um, and uh, wrote it like I like I mentioned earlier. Um, found people that were interested in helping me tell it, and we went on the journey. 
and um, there were some ups and downs in the journey, but ultimately we ended up making it. And mm. I'm, you know, I'm a writer, an actor, and a star role, and a, and a producer on that film. We were able to give other people, you know, actors that I that I, you know, that I love and admire, you know, giving giving you know them work and other people that I had no idea. You know, I've never heard of them. Maybe they have or haven't heard of me. And we're all, you know, I mean, everybody's all working together. We, we hiring more faces of color is what I mean. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and giving opportunities that might not otherwise be given. And it, it really, you know, it really warmed my heart to see people, you know, with the opportunity, like I've been wanting the opportunity to step up to the plate and hit a home run, you know? Yeah. It's some really phenomenal acting in this piece. And it's, you know, because we advocated for them, you know? This is a story that has, hasn't really been told is uh, over a hundred and you know 103 years old mm -hmm. and you, most people don't know about it you know so right. being able to service that story that's that's relatively unknown being able to do this film with people that are relatively unknown <laughs> you know what I mean and you know have it have it ride high on wonderful performances I'm very proud of that I'm proud of you, baby. Oh, baby. Thank you. <laughs> I am. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. God is good. Thank you. Are you and Devon related or twins? <laughs> you see, we I'm have to born, answer this question for the people. Uh, Devon and I are good friends. Really, really good friends. He is not my blood brother, but he is my brother, like my spirit brother, and and one of my one of my best friends. He's a great guy. Great, great guy. And I mean, it's. I mean, I, I like to think that we'd be really good friends whether we looked like each other or not. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody's just going around looking for their doppelganger and saying, hey, <laughs> I want you to be my friend. Like, no, that's not, you know what I mean? Like, no. Yes. You know what I mean? He's a, no, but yeah, we're, we are not blood relatives. Related, yes. Um, but by the blood. By the blood. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Someone literally wrote this. Tell Trey to drop that skincare routine. <laughs> Yo. It was a dude that wrote it too. Brother, brother, brother. <laughs> brother, brother, brother. Um, Drop that skincare. Run, run that skincare routine. I don't though. do nothing. I use, I use CeraVe. I, 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 I do the facial scrub maybe more often than I need to. Like every day. I have a What's the facial scrub? Jack Black. Jack Black facial scrub. It's a harder scrub for, you know, for physical guys. Physical exfoliation. Skin. A physical exfoliation, but they're like bigger stones that are, you know, they don't break apart easily. They're very like coarse. But it gets in deep in the skin, and then after that, I use uh, CeraVe to smooth it all out. You know what yes. I mean? And I rinse that stuff off, brother. Pat it down and go on about my day. <laughs> Lucky you. What scripture impacts your faith walk the most? I mean, at this point, I'm at I'm Jeremiah thirty three verse three. Ask me, and I will show you great and searchable things you do not yet know. And, you know, just, I don't know, I, I feel like I have a lot of them that I speak over my life daily. Um, that's the one right now, you know, I, while I'm in this phase, um, at this age, I'm, I'm, I'm more curious about like, God, what's what's happening? What do we, you know what I mean? Like if you if you'll drop these wisdom nuggets these on nuggets. your boy, these nuggets on <laughs> your boy, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> show me great unsearchable things I don't know. If I ask, I'm asking. If you were granted the opportunity to ask God one question, what would it be? And you would get the answer, like. I don't know. Isn't that cool? It's That's very a good question. cool. Um, I, I guess I'd ask him, are you proud of me? Aww. Yeah, are you proud of me? Which is funny because my next question was, what's one thing you would want him to say to you? I'm proud of you. You know, well done. I mean, all that. But, you know, yeah, I guess I'd be dead. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. but That's good. yeah, yeah. That's really good. We're moving on to wifey. Is it my turn to ask you questions? No, no, oh. no, no, no. I'm asking you questions about me. People want to know what you have to say about me. Okay, here. okay. You have to be honest. I'm, I'm honest. I'm, I'm being honest. You, you have been honest. You have yeah. been honest. Here we go. What annoys you the most about Grace? <laughs> Um, um, what, um, you're not trying to get me in trouble. No! <laughs> uh, you never get in trouble! <laughs> Straight no chaser. I think, I, sometimes I would like to not be interrupted when I'm speaking. Yeah, that's I true. think that, you know what I mean? Like the, I would love to have the opportunity to get 
my full thought out <laughs> before, you know what I mean, the rebuttal. <laughs> I am an interrupter. It's okay. Yeah. You just have a lot, you know, you, you have a lot to add and, uh, you know, the, the, the cultures are different and that's the thing. I think that, you know, it all, it all comes back down to communication. And, and we are affected greatly by our culture with regard to communication, the culture of, you know, of communication in our households, how we've been taught, how we watched others talk, how we were talked to, you know, and yeah. Yeah. True. So I'll work on that, baby. We work on it together, baby. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. What do you admire most about Grace? Oh man. I um <clears throat> I admire I mean, hey, there's so many things. I, I admire, I think your ability to stay L-I-G-H-T, hmm. not L-I-T-E, L-I-G-H-T, despite whatever, you know? I feel like there's always something radiating from within you. And the thing is, you're, you're work-driven, you're, you're priority, you know, driven, you, you have a goal, you have goals, you have things that you're working towards and you, and you go like a freight train and I appreciate that. But the way you do it, you know what I mean? the way that, that you are able to interpret or God interprets through you, the energy, the love, the, you know what I mean? The, the care, the compassion is very L-I-G-H-T. And I think that that is one of the most important things in general that, that the world needs to recognize, utilize, because we're literally in a, in a battle with light against dark. You bring light, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I see, you bring a light that shines and penetrates. You know what I mean? There's nothing passive about you or your L I G H T. I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah, baby. I love you. I love you, honey. Um, <clears throat> I'm L I G H T. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what is one of your favorite dishes that Grace prepares for you? <laughs> you make so many things, and I love them. For the most part, there's some things I have, you know. Are you haven't I, liked? I mean, yeah. You, but, Wait, name one thing that I've made that you haven't liked. That fish you did, that fishy fish. Okay, so there's one time I, I did a mahi mahi. Mahi mahi, yeah. And the mahi mahi itself was fishy. Itself was fishy. Right. It wasn't necessarily so, you. I think we, we were air frying like or something like that. Yeah, we were, air, we were yeah. air frying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, honey, you make so. some amazing meals. Yeah, you, um, I love it when you pan sear halibut for me. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I love the curry chicken. Mm -hmm. Like love, 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 mm -hmm. love, love, love. All the spices are from home. Mm -hmm. What are those, the Caribbean, what are those peppers? It's been the seasoned peppers. No, no, not seasoned peppers. It's, it's a seasoned pepper. What are you the scotch bonnet, you scotch bonnet, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's been fun because this week we've been having a lot of fun in the kitchen cooking mm -hmm. for quarantine. Mm -hmm. I've been having to switch it up. You make great meals, baby. Thank you, baby. I am blessed to have a chef in my kitchen because Lord knows what I do. <laughs> Cereal every day. <laughs> What's one of your favorite romantic things to do for your wife other than buy get buy gifts, have sex, or take her out? I like to write you poems. Yes, you do. I do like to write you poems <laughs> under my alias. Captain Kevin Jazz, 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 aka yes, a a Yellow, Yellow Man. Man. <laughs> Catman Jazz, baby. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes, yeah. you do, and I yeah. love them. What's one major adjustment or compromise that you made when entering marriage? I've had to make make a little bit more room for the fact that you um I, that I'm sharing space with somebody who's very busy. <laughs> See how you try to push that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you can say it. And I, I, I'm, I, saying I'm, it. I'm saying sometimes. it. I'm saying it. I don't like to put words on people You're like so that. Funny. But but I had to make a little bit more room for people who are a little bit more busy. <laughs> and and that's what marriage is all about. It's about right. you know I mean picking up the slack as I hope you pick up my slack because I know I do things too. Yeah. I know you do, my love. You yeah. Know? So that's what we got to do. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. That was a good compromise. <clears throat> One day I'm gonna get it together. <laughs> <laughs> what is your advice to women who may be waiting for their one? That's a great question. Um, I don't know how a woman thinks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I can't. I don't. I don't want to presume to know anything as far as like the biological clock or. I, I would say that um, you know. For me, I have what I feel are great um, intentions for my wife. 
and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only man who wants to treat a woman with love and respect. I'm not the only man who wants to, you know, plan for things, you know, that are of benefit to my significant other. I'm not the only one who wants to be, you know, as romantic. And I think that if you haven't encountered that yet, it's not because you're not enough or you're doing something wrong or you need to, you know, rearrange the way that you present yourself at all. I, I, the way that Grace and I came together was completely divine. And we've told the story before. I'm sure we'll tell it again. Um, and I believe that I believe wholeheartedly because it happened to me that what is indeed yours, you know, you will find and will find you. And it can happen. It will happen, I believe, to everyone who gives themselves the space and the time to allow it to happen without the judgment and without the self-diagnosis that lends itself to anything negative. It is not you, it's just time. Yeah, that's good, baby. Youbond.com. Oh, Youbond.com, baby. Thanks for sitting and sipping with me, baby. Yes, my loving. The drink is like strategically oh. like, oh, that's a little swallow. Mm. I, I, love love you. You. I love you, baby. Until next time on our sit and sip, join us for our next sit and sip. We're gonna do an anniversary edition where we answer the questions that you guys are asking us as a couple. Um, our four year anniversary is in two weeks. Yeah. So we will try to maybe do it around that time and, and, and send it off to you guys for April. So thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you on the next sit and sip. Bye.